Hello. Today we're going to read Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 34. It talks about laying up treasures in heaven. <clears throat> it talks about laying up treasures in heaven and also about not being anxious. Something that I think is interesting about this particular chapter is that usually when there's misinterpretation of scriptures, I blame it on lukewarm Christians. The Bible didn't technically say I have to listen to my parents, or I just have to honor them. In this particular chapter, there's something that kind of usually hardcore Christians misinterpret. So let's go ahead and read the first bit. Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 and following. Do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, Pirate's treasure. where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness. No one can serve two masters. For either he will hate one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. As mentioned before, I think a lot of the more conservative crazy Christians get this section wrong. I'd consider myself a crazy conservative Christian, by the way. I did not almost just fall there. Regardless of what it looked like. The Bible says, do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth. Well, what is a treasure? Is a house a treasure? Is it talking just about money in general? Is it talking about anything you treasure? And if the Bible says that, and it is indeed talking about that, then aren't we called the poverty? You can see how this can get confusing. And so there are a lot of Christians out there who I actually really respect, who live their life in poverty because of verses like this. However, I don't think that's what Jesus is saying here. The reason that I don't think that that is the case is because there are a lot of Christians in the Bible who have houses. If you think about the early church, they were actually meeting in each other's houses and stuff. I actually can't think of a single example right now, but editing math, we definitely can. Either way, Jesus does make it pretty clear what he actually means by this statement. At the end of this little section here in verse 24, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. But math? I hear you shouting at the screen. Money's not my math. I just spend 40 hours a week trying to make it so that I can... Wait a second. Okay, money is most people's masters, but it's not everyone's. The important thing is that you're spending your money and your resources and your time trying to build up the kingdom of heaven. And that way you know that you'll be rewarded in heaven like God promised. And the rewards that you're making in heaven aren't going to be like the rewards you're going to be making for yourself down here, which are temporary. The important thing is that you're going to be serving either one or the other. For some people, a reward might be a vacation. I know people who are so passionate about traveling that that's all they want to do. They spend all their time planning various vacations and different trips. They'll work and work and work. And once word leaks out that a pirate has gone soft, people begin to disobey you, and then it's nothing but work, work, work all the time. For other people, it's the various toys they have, whether it be jewelry, watches, or clothing. I know when I was a kid, all I could think about was the Wii. Like, when, we, when I finally got that thing, it was like, man, I cannot wait till I get home and I can play the Wii. We would like to play. But you might be sitting there asking yourself, well, how do I know what my treasure is? Luckily for you, Jesus gives a pretty solid answer to that question. Verse 21, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Ask yourself, where is your heart? When you're doing something boring and you're thinking, man, I can't wait till this is done so I can do that thing. Or when you're working saying, I can actually spend a little bit of my money on that thing. That's what you're treasuring in your heart. Is it the thing of God or is it a thing of the world? That's between you and God to answer. I think this is a really important question to ask yourself. Are the things that I'm treasuring, are they things of the world or are they things of the kingdom of heaven? Sell all that you have and give it unto the poor. Then you shall have treasures in heaven. And come, follow me. If you don't know the answer to that question, then you have some praying to do. Or if you do know the answer to that question and it's the thing of the world, then you have some praying to do. For now, 
Let's read on. Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through the end of the chapter. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither soar, nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to the span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass in the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow can be anxious about itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Okay, let's make something really clear right up the gate. Jesus isn't saying here that you can't plan ahead or that you shouldn't plan ahead. In fact, the Bible says in other places that you should plan ahead. I think that's in Proverbs, but I don't remember for sure. You know who does know for sure? Editing Mafu. What Jesus is talking about here is anxiety. Careful, SpongeBob! Careful, SpongeBob! SpongeBob, careful! Careful, SpongeBob! Careful, SpongeBob! Careful, SpongeBob! Careful, SpongeBob! Patrick, the lid's already off. Oh, now it's my turn! If you think about it, this teaching makes a lot of sense. If you really believe in God, and you believe that God loves you, and you really do believe that God is in control of everything, then isn't having anxiety about your life a little bit of a lack of faith? I've heard it said before that this is the most common sin in the church. As humans, we are naturally worried about things. And what's great about this particular teaching is that Jesus doesn't just claim the authority and then tell us what to do. It's kind of nice the way that Jesus handles this. Instead of saying, I'm the boss and I say, don't be anxious. He kind of argues a case. And if you're struggling with anxiety, I'd encourage you to read this chapter a lot. <laughs> and this particular section when it's talking about anxiety, really dwell on it and pick apart each argument that Jesus makes. He's trying to tell you exactly why you shouldn't be anxious, more than just saying don't be. He talks about the birds of the air and says, listen, I feed the birds of the air and you're so much more important to me than they are. So why shouldn't I feed you if you're focused on me? And he talks about Solomon in all of his glory, with all the wealth that he has, still can't be as beautiful and as well-dressed as a lily. As I was thinking about this chapter and I was wondering, you know, obviously we don't have a king in our culture. Who's a good person to compare him to? That's kind of a more modern reference. Who are the kings though, who are glorified in our culture? Celebrities? They're definitely not as beautiful as Lulu's, that's all I'm gonna say. So if we're not supposed to be thinking, what am I gonna eat? What am I gonna wear? What should we be thinking about? Well, verse 33, which is a very famous verse. But first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Spend your time and your money and your resources on the kingdom of God. If you do that, Watch how Jesus is going to provide for you. There have been so many really great Christians throughout history who've decided that they're gonna spend all their resources on God and they just trust that God's gonna feed them and clothe them and put a roof over their heads. I'd encourage you to read some of their stories. Usually they all have that one thing in common. And it's really easy for us in today's culture to be like, okay, sure, that worked back then, but now that's just not the way the world works. It wouldn't work now. That's not how the world worked before. Those people were just having faith. Likewise, we can have faith. The icing on the cake is that if you do spend your money, your resources, and your time on the kingdom of heaven, then just like the other portion of the chapter was saying, you're actually storing up treasures in heaven. And they're carrying treasures from the pyramid before the treasures are smuggled out of the country. The stolen treasures. Treasure. As we're wrapping up today's video, I want to encourage everyone to spend about 15 minutes and just pray. There are two things I want you to pray about today, actually fancy. The first thing is that you would stop being anxious. I know this is something you struggle with. This is something I struggle with. This is something that everyone struggles with. Recognize it as a lack of faith. God can provide for you and God will provide for you if you're faithful to him. Stop being anxious. Ask that God will help you to stop being anxious. And second, pray that God will help you identify what your treasures are. Treasure? Are you laying up treasures in heaven like Jesus asked you to? Or are you doing it as the world does and laying up treasures here on earth? Everything that you have on earth is going to perish. I promise you that. As you're praying today, ask God, where am I laying up my treasures? And if you're laying them up in the wrong place, 
ask that God will help you to lay up treasures in the right place, which obviously is heaven. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about anything ever, then you can email me here. Until then, pray for me, friends. And if you're watching this, I've already prayed for you. Bye.